Hello solar sun worshippers. Feels like winter was really long, wasn't it? I was still burning coal up until about two weeks ago. Anyway, hello. Milo here. I've compiled a list of um, about 30 things which I think is essential boaters kit. Just a few little items that makes life on the water and on the canal just a little bit more manageable. So this is my essential boaters kit. The first item is a small compact torch for negotiating muddy towpaths in dark. You'll probably want to get the smallest, brightest torch you can buy. An umbrella. Really, really good for muddy towpaths when it's raining. Wellies! And to go in your wellies, or even when you're just padding around your boat in winter, these are handy. They are heat holder socks. With the British summer being about as unpredictable as celebrity baby names, or the headliners at this year's Glastonbury Festival, you'll want to get yourself some warm, waterproof clothing. I went a little bit over the top this year. I um, bought myself a North Face jacket. Of course, um, waterproof trousers are optional. But the weather here in this country isn't always doom and gloom and dark and cold uh, and rainy. Occasionally we do get the sun. So you're going to want to invest in a pair of these. And also, why not, get yourself a pair of these. Also, we're kind of losing the ozone layer a little bit here in Britain, so uh, you might want to invest in a bit of sun cream too. There are some fantastic books around on rope splicing, there are some fantastic manuals on narrowboat maintenance, and there are also some great guides as well. Uh, the Nicholson guides have fantastic local knowledge and also all sorts of information on the history of the canals. A multi-tool. I personally recommend this one. It's a Leatherman Wave. A BWB key. These are a fantastic idea. You can pick these up, or you used to be able to pick these up for around five pounds. I don't know how much they are now. And uh, they've got a little print on it. I don't know if you can see that there. BWB, stands for British Waterways. Now, traditionally, if you took these to a key cutter, they would not make a copy of this because of that stamp. This is basically uh, our security, okay? Uh, a lot of people on the waterways don't really understand or respect the BWB key. Uh, that's why some facilities sometimes are left open. Lockable um, facilities like toilet blocks in Little Venice sometimes are left open. So show some respect for the facilities that you gain access to with your key and make sure that you lock it up at the end. Just a couple more keys. This is a Lucas key, or traditionally your engine startup key, uh, depending on what kind of engine you've got. Most engines that I've encountered, most narrowboat engines come uh, with one of these little keys. Very, very handy. You've also got your water and diesel key. Uh, water on this side, diesel on that side, and also your hexagonal pump out key, if you have a pump out. A keys float. These are really, really, really handy if, like me, you're prone to accidentally dropping your keys in the water when you're at a lock. Also, uh, it's very important that you do not overload your float with keys, otherwise um, it will sink. You can, of course, add more cork to your float, though. This is a champagne cork that I've just added, and there's space for another one there if I'm adding more and more keys later. <coughs> Ah. Mosquitoes can be more annoying than a person with a kazoo. So, next item on the list is bug spray. You don't have to get the one that was developed by the uh, US military for use in Vietnam. This one's got 95% DEET in it. That will tend to melt your clothes. But you can get some nice natural alternatives. This one is from Boots, and uh, it's uh, just a natural sort of uh, citrus sort of thing. And it keeps away midges and sandflies, and most importantly, horseflies. Those things are nasty. Check that out. That is a horsefly bite. Which reminds me, it's also good to put some bug spray on the backs of your hands too.
Now once you have all your personal items, your torch, your multi-tool and various other things, it's always good to put them in a backpack. That leaves your hands free to pull in ropes and get on and off your boat. A flat cassette hose is excellent if storage on your boat is at a premium. Earplugs! What? Get yourself a nice pair of earplugs. Uh, these are actually my uh, wife's suggestion because um, I snore. Uh, there is also another cure for snoring, um, which is uh, a little bit of a vapor rub around the nostrils, Vix vapor rub around the nostrils, just opens up the uh, uh, breathing um, apparatus and uh, stops you from snoring. The uh, earplugs also have another function. Uh, when you're mooring in London and you are maybe doubled up with lots of boats or sometimes tripled or quadrupled up as it is in London at the moment, uh, things can get a little bit noisy. Uh, you've got street noise, you've got late night drinkers coming home and all sorts of things. So uh, earplugs are also good uh, if you're a light sleeper. Now the next three items uh, on the list kind of do the same thing. Uh, it really just depends on your personal choice. Uh, people are often asking me, if you're moored in the middle of nowhere, how do you get things to your boat? Deliveries, shopping, gas bottles, coal bags and things like that. Uh, well, uh, you can use any one of these items. There is something you can buy that will basically do the job of all three. Um, it's as simple to use as a wheelbarrow, it's as rugged as a rugged trailer, and it folds down just like a folding trolley, and that is a bike trailer. You can use bike trailers to carry all sorts of things. You can also get a bit carried away, as they are quite expensive. But if you have a bike, it's good to get a bike trailer because they are basically as good as having a car. One of the things that I appreciate about being a boater is that uh, I don't really have a TV. So, another item on my list, which is very, very important when you're a boater, is to make sure you have a radio. And now we come to fire. Matches. Lighter, or one of these long ones as well, if you have a uh, solid fuel stove, very very handy. Uh, but lighters also have a, another important function. Uh, when your padlocks freeze up in the winter time, uh, you can use a lighter to defrost them. Don't forget to heat up both the lock and the key and be careful because when the metal heats up you can burn your fingers. Now you can, of course, avoid the whole lighter, padlock, key, heating up, warming thing by just making sure that as you approach the winter time you squirt a little bit of WD-40 in all of your padlocks. Near the words. You make my heart sing. You make everything move it. Wild thing. The last item on my list is rum. Now it doesn't have to be rum, it can be any of your personal choice of uh, a drink. It could be beer, it could be wine, it could be spirits, it could be anything you want. The reason why I've chosen rum is because there is a deep psychological need within myself to be a pirate. I I'm kind of getting way off track here. Rum! Here's the rum. Smooth. Ah, that reminds me, rum is a fantastic drink for warming you up in the winter time. Wow, you stayed around till the end. Thank you. This is the end of the blog. It took quite a long time for me to compile and film the list. Obviously you can see my hair's a little bit longer now. Let us know you enjoyed it.
leave one or two uh, comments. Or just subscribe to my blog if you're interested in seeing other how-to videos or other crazy things that I'm getting up to. Or alternatively, you could just watch another one of my videos. Up to you, totally up to you. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.